Morning Revolution, and welcome to Good Morning Revolution, everybody. Uh, Anita and Rosanna, Good morning. Scott with your Hunter hat, and Michael with your winning smile. Hope everybody's doing great. It's been a, it's been a, it's been one hell of a week, and the sun is shining in New York City, mm -hmm. and it's shining all over the world. There used to be a song like that, you know, something shining all over the world. Um, Though uh, it's dark in some places, including in uh, uh, Washington, D.C. yesterday, they canceled the meeting of the House because QAnon conspiracy, they were worried that there was going to be some kind of crazy events. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then uh, there's been a big debate about cancel culture. <laughs> cancel culture. They, they're claiming that the left and the Democrats want to cancel. Well, they should know about it, yeah. Osana, because they 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 canceled the cultures of the indigenous peoples. They were the original. They canceled the cultures of the African peoples. I'm walking around here with my last name. I got some slave master's name at the end of, you know, they canceled my people's African names, you know? And even on the uh, immigrant side of my family that came in through Ellis Island, they were they wanted to assimilate, so they canceled their names. <laughs> I mean, Rosanna, well, what, more recently. Uh, wait a minute, I'm asking Rosanna. Rosanna, what kind of hypocrisy do these people have? <laughs> I mean, well, you know, they're trying to get to do anything that they can control us, anything that can they can forget who we are, you know, anything that will make us feel like we're robots just following one master. So we just got to resist and hang on to our roots, hang on to who we are, hang on to our family. It doesn't matter, you know, um, who you are, what color skin you are. You still have a past. You still have a culture. You still have beliefs that are important. And you got to hang on to those that are good and let go of those that were not good. Fight for them. You know, that's right. right. Scott, you were trying to get a word in. Yeah, even more recently, you know, the I remember uh, back under under George W. Bush, like what was the name of that group, the like Foundation for Academic Freedom or something, a guy named David Horowitz. Uh, right. The whole stink about pay, professors who were unpatriotic for for questioning the the war and the wars in the Middle East, uh, questioning the government's policy, you know, trying to force. Uh, um, like litmus tests and, and pledges of allegiance and whatever from university faculty. So don't talk, yeah, don't talk to us about about cancel culture. It's it's. I saw a meme on Facebook that said it's never. It's not about someone getting canceled. About who it's about who has the right to cancel other people, and that's right. what I mean. I I was astounded when CPAC picked that as its theme with all the problems that we have. You know, those are the that's the well, that's what conservatives are wanting to address. And it's projection because I mean that that uh, right wing uh, part of the uh, Republican Party, part of the uh, the regressive part of the ruling class, has been into cancel culture for a long time. Like you said, I mean not not just back even politically, like Mark Stanford. But then I then I realized someone I looked into it and I found out that cancel culture, the phrase, comes from Black Twitter, and that's why they are they seem to be really going after it as a, you know, watch word. Michael and Anita, you guys were in Columbus. Y'all trying to cancel Christopher Columbus's. Uh, Damn right. I mean, what, what do you got against Christopher Columbus, Michael? I mean, what, what's the problem? I mean, well, I, you know, years ago in Columbus, the big thing to do was to go on a field trip to a replica of Christopher Columbus's ship, the mm -hmm. Santa Maria. You know, you could go downtown, spend the night on it. I know that's what the Boy Scouts used to do. Mm. So, you know, of course, we have to stand up against, you know, genocide and slavery and everything that Columbus represented. But if you want to talk about cancel culture, let's talk about the fact that, you know, we're, it's not a very well-known fact that the person who invented the traffic light, you know, was African-American. It's not very well known that the founding fathers of the Dominican Republic, you know, in my mom's family, um, two of them, two of them were uh, Black. You know, but you see pictures of them and they're whitened. So that's cancel <laughs> culture. That's cancel culture. They even did that to Jesus. I mean, I mean, come <laughs> on. Canada Lee. 
Canada Lee, who lightning round. How many of you have heard of Canada Lee? Not me. Scott, Michael, no. you? Rosanna, you? No. Nope. Anita? No. Sorry. Scott? No. Canada Lee was a very famous, handsome, Sidney Poitier kind of looking guy, Pope. And during the 50s, he was a communist. And he got run out of Hollywood, and now nobody ever heard of him. Mm. Paul Robeson. Paul Robeson. Everybody's heard of Paul Robeson, okay. right? Yep. But if you go to young people today, a lot mm -hmm. of middle-aged never heard of him. Mm. Paul Robeson was more famous than Michael Jackson. Y'all heard of Michael Jackson, right? Maybe yep. he They wiped Paul out of the history books. Mm -hmm. You can't even know any a genius, spoke 12 languages, you know, actor, football player, linguist, lawyer. singer, right. huh? lawyer, lawyer, dramatist, and you never, great revolutionary democratic class struggle kind of guy, you never, and I mean, they're just so um, hypocritical. I mean, they, and what about all this Dr. Zeus stuff, Scott, they want to cancel it's, it's nonsense. I mean, the, so Dr. Seuss's uh, estate, the foundation, uh, decided to stop publishing a couple of early books mm -hmm. that had um, caricatures, really racist caricatures in them. And these were things that, if I've understood correctly, Dr. Seuss himself, Theodore Geisel, apologized for and expressed regret over later in his life. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, a, a foundation that is reckoning with the you know, with, with the history of white supremacy in this country and, and finding its place in the fight against it. And, and that's a great thing, you know, and, and to, to criticize that, to accuse it of some kind of censorship. Yeah, it, it really, it really takes me off because what people are, what those people are actually demanding, the people that are complaining about canceling Dr. Seuss, it, they're saying that, you know, we're not creating a safe space for white supremacy. We're not creating <laughs> yeah. a safe space for people to make fun of uh, people of other other races and other ethnicities, you know, that's that's what they're complaining and about. And they're right about it. And they're right about it. No safe space for white supremacy. Mm -hmm. Get out of town. No safe space for male supremacy. Get out of town. No mm -hmm. safe space for homophobia. Get out of town. We're not having it. It's a new day. Mm -hmm. and, and and we're gonna the sun is rising on and we're gonna keep holding it up even if we get burned a little bit every now and uh, then uh, but the sun tans our skins and gives us vitamin D and uh, with that you know we'll be able to let's shift the conversation a little bit big uh, week in the class struggle your president Scott mr. Biden made a wonderful statement calling uh, supporting unionization in Bessemer, Alabama. Well, by the way, my family is from around them parts in Bessemer, Alabama. Right outside there, there, was, there were coal miners and farmers back in the day, turn of the 19th century, before the great mi migration. Um, and Scott, uh, weren't you happy to hear that? I mean, you said- well, you got I, think, I, think it's, I think it was a very strong declaration. Um, you know, certainly not the kind of thing we're used to hearing. Um, on the other hand, I, I think it's, you know, the, the, the PRO Act is in front of the House. Um, you know, the, the measure of the administration's support for the trade union movement, for the working class, um, can't just be in words of support. It has to be, what was it that, that Ayanna Presley said in a, a tweet? Policy is our love language, right? We got to see some action on it. Why is it got to be on the other hand, Anita? Why can't we just say um, it's a great statement from uh, Mr. Biden? Well, it is a great statement, but we have to see some. I agree with Scott 100 percent. We have to see some action behind it. And we have but, to make yeah. sure he, Biden uses his bully pulpit to get that PRO Act passed, both in the House and in the Senate. Um, so you're and, taking a wait and see um, approach. I'm, 
I, I mean, I'm, I'm going out this afternoon to buy a Port, Rob Portman's office to make my feelings known. And then on Monday, we're leafleting on the Bessemer, Alabama uh, case. So, um, Rosanna, don't you think it's a little too soon? I mean, the man just made the statement last week and everybody's exceptions and buts and I mean. Well, I think, I think uh, you know, words are one thing and deeds are another. And given our history, and uh, we have to, we have to have that position where we're just we'll say, well, this is this is a good first step, but let's see what you you know what you follow it up with, and see if it's really what you're going to do, because he has been backtracking on some things, and so we want to be able to, you know, uh, wait and see in some ways, but it is a good step. It is a good step forward, but we can't feel like the process is over. Michael, when Karl Marx wrote a letter to Abraham Lincoln, was the word but in the letter? You I don't know, remember. It, 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 it kind I'm of glad was. you're anti-slavery, Mr. Lincoln, honest day, but. They agreed on that issue. That's what's important. They agreed on the issue of, uh, of abolition of slavery. They may have not seen eye to eye on everything, you know, um, but it comes down to policy. You know, we can, you know, I don't think anyone denies that it's bad to have presidential support, you know, uh, for labor, right? But as we saw last week, you know, we weren't very happy about what Biden did in Syria. You know, we condemn that. We put out a statement on that. And so it's, it's about policy. Okay, lightning round. One good thing, nice thing you can say about Joe Biden. He's your homeboy, Scott. Go. He... Ding! <laughs> He's not Donald His Trump. wife is friendly. His wife is friendly. <laughs> I mean, uh, one good thing Biden did. He rescued nice shelter dogs. Huh? He rescued shelter dogs. <laughs> he rescued shelter dogs. Rosanna, one good thing Biden did. Come on. Oh, my goodness. Um, well, he's not Trump. That's the first thing. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Joe. I think I have one now. Okay. <laughs> Uh, he, he his his cabinet does is historically diverse. It looks more like the American people than than any you know White House in in the history of this country, and that that is a real step, regardless of the diversity in the corporate multicultural uh, woke diversity is a good thing. Michael, he believes in climate change. He believes in climate change. <laughs> okay. I, I know of two. One was the speech that he gave with the anniversary, the terrible 500,000 death anniversary. That was a good speech, y'all. Unqualified, good speech. Well, don't quote me on the unqualified part because they're gonna say, yeah, see, the Communist Party is tailing the Democrat. <laughs> and Joe Sam said that, no, 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 no. He did stutter a little bit, in, in that, which I can say because I stutter, you know, so um, that's kind of speech. Impact. And the other thing was the speech on the uh, union. That was a good speech. Mm -hmm. Bruce Bostick said, Anita, your comrade, Michael, yes. said, Michael your comrade, said that that is so important that it opens the door. He said, when Roosevelt did that back in the 30s, it opened the door to all kinds of organizing of the unorganized mm -hmm. around the country for mm -hmm. the US <clears throat> president to say something like that. Right. Unprecedented. Mm -hmm. And then somebody said, even Obama never said anything as strong mm -hmm. as that. So, you know, it's something that you gotta exactly. look at because there's a big uh, uh, fight ahead in the Senate the House passed a gay rights equality bill, and they passed a voting rights bill, Rosanna. One. And the Senate is just. Oh, and don't forget the police reform. The police reform. The bill, city, which is huge. And, um, you know, does it, does it have defunding in it, Scott? It, it yeah, I need to take it. Qualified immunity, uh, you know, ends ends qualified immunity and a couple of other things. I think they named it after George Floyd, right? The George Floyd Police Accountability Act. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. It was yes. written. Um, who Karen wrote that Bass. bill? Karen Bass introduced it. Karen uh, Bass, she's a wonderful California. delegate from California. Mm -hmm. 
has a great legacy, right, Rosanna? Yes, she does. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. She, there's some great, great uh, folks from the great state of uh, mm -hmm. California. We have D Dolores Huerta, and we have uh, Cesar Chavez, and we have the Congresswoman, Barbara Lee. Yes. Ron Dellums from California, mm -hmm. one of the great patriotic, revolutionary minded democratic people. Uh, well, some of them weren't revolutionary, but they were some great Democrats anyway, mm -hmm. trade unionists. And I don't want to say what they, they weren't what they were, or they weren't, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> that was negative. Okay. Did anybody watch the movie? Speaking of revolutionaries, um, uh, the, 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 the Black Panther movie? Judas and the Black Messiah. Messiah. I yeah, saw half of it. Judas and, and, and the Black Messiah? Yes. Anita, yeah. did you I, like it? I haven't, I haven't, I didn't watch the whole thing because I-, I How prefer, could you stop? I, I, it wasn't, I have an attention deficit disorder <laughs> um, when it comes to movies, but I really prefer the eyes on the prize episode where we really know what's real and what's not real. I don't, I'm not crazy about dramatizations, whether in fiction or in, you know, movies. So uh, that's just my personal view, but I think it's a story that's really worth telling. And, and especially, I, I think it's really a great um, story and it sounds like they did it a pretty good job with it. Anybody else watch it? No. I no. Wanna Michael, what'd you think? I liked it. It was just too much concentration on the traitor. You know, not so much on Fred Hampton, but. But it was a movie uh, about I mean, the title of the movie was Judas and the Black Judas. Mm -hmm. I I would Judas. have, but they, but except for at the end when they talk about him committing suicide, it was almost as if he was portrayed as the hero and Fred was the crazy revolutionary. But the ending, well, I mean, no, man, the guy took sticks of dynamite and said, "Hey, let's go blow up something." And Fred and Adam said, "Are you freaking out of your mind?" That's true. Yeah, crazy? in the trunk of the car. Yeah. Uh, great acting. Great writing, um, a story that everybody should uh, see. And it is an essay, Michael, on petty bourgeois radicalism, what we call petty bourgeois. Mm -hmm. These were working class guys and women, mm -hmm. but they got captivated by, you know, what they thought were Marxist ideas, but were really something else. Mm -hmm. um, they, they decided that the uh, working class was no longer revolutionary. And therefore they had to find different uh, uh, centers of revolutionary activity. So they said the, the declassed, what we call lumpen proletarian elements, the pimps, the hustlers, the numbers runners, the gangsters, the dope dealers, you know, uh, were the source of revolutionary activity that they, they, they did believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And the guy who uh, was the snitch, he got caught because he was, of all things, he was impersonating an FBI agent. Mm -hmm. He was stealing people's cars. <laughs> anyway, it's a good uh, example of the use of popular culture. And everybody should watch it and weigh in and draw the lessons. And I think that's it for our show this week. Um, you know, uh, next week we're going to be back uh, on Friday. We got a webinar coming up. When is it? Sunday. 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 Fascism. What's the subject? The origin of American fascism, I believe. Origin of American fascism on Sunday. By the way, the history author is going to be in there. On there, Who? Roberto. Okay. The I author forget of the book, right? Yeah. Um, the author of the book, if you sign up for our text message, uh, American B. B. Moth, I can't, his name's uh, Michael Joseph Roberto, 7 p.m. Eastern, Sunday, mm -hmm. and it's the origins of, of the fascism in the USA. Be there, be square, and happy International Women's Month. Mm -hmm. Same to you, Joe. Rosanna, yep. Anita, happy... International Women's Day is coming on March 8th. Yes, right. Uh, and uh, we're going to have to focus our program next week on 
on the role of uh, women in the struggle for e equality and democracy. Sounds good. So, so let's prepare. All right. And with that, we want to wish everybody a great week. Uh, re remember that our focus is on the extreme right. Uh, and um, and uh, we're trying to force the Republicans to do the, but if they don't do the right thing, then we're gonna, the, the democracy is gonna move ahead without them. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then all that reactionary male supremacy and racism and homophobia and anti-immigrant bigotry will be canceled by history. The river of history will wash over us. Okay, I'm stopping. Goodbye. See you all. <laughs> Have a good one. Bye. Bye. All right.